First step, always. You take this system and you need to translate it into a matrix, okay? So it has the same dimensions as our previous one, right? So it's going to be uh, two rows, three columns, okay? And I write down my numbers, like so. Two, one. Okay. So far, so good. And now the arithmetic begins, okay? So you need to make some choices, just like you do with normal simultaneous equations, as to, well, what might be the most logical thing to do to modify these rows so they play nicely together and cancel things out? Because that's what I want in the end, right? So, a suggestion. Anyone? Times two. Take the top row and multiply it by two. I think that's a good call. Why is that such a good idea? Why is that so useful? Why is it so efficient is a better question. What's your next step? Add the two rows together. Good. Okay. So I'm going to take the second row and add it to the first. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's all Sorry, I didn't notice it. Okay. Sorry. Let's pick up again. I'm going to add this bottom row to the first one. Watch. Okay. Zero, as you expected, right? Six plus negative one. Five. 28 plus negative eight. 20. Good. In general, you try to add where you can because most people's brains better with adding than subtracting. Um, we get negatives mixed up and so on. Okay. And this row is the same as before. Okay. One step to get this variable. What do I do? Excellent. Let's divide through. Zero, one, four. So I've solved one. I've solved one. And I'm going to use that constant to solve the other one. Right? Now here's one of the cool things, by the way. Um, you might notice, I wonder if any of you are thinking, man, this method with matrices is a pain because every single time you do something, you have yeah, to write all of the <laughs> equations. right? And I'll agree that does slow you down a bit. However, the immediate payback to that is that because you're writing every row at the same time, every equation in the system, you can modify more than one equation at the same time. And that's all good. All the changes are being tracked, right? So rather than write this next line down, right, as it was before, I'm going to modify it immediately. What do you think I should do with this row? Keep in mind that this is the row I've got above. Now I think probably, remember, I'm trying to eliminate, I've got this one solved, so I want to eliminate that from this next row, right? So if I have one and negative one here, I should just add them together, okay? So watch what happens. Zero plus two, two. One plus negative one, zero, which is what I wanted, okay? And then it's four plus negative eight, which is negative four. Okay? So you see, matrices are more powerful in that they let you do arithmetic faster. That's the payoff for having to write more. You can think more as well. And now what do I do? Just divide, that's all. And there are your two solutions. A is going to be negative 2 and B is 4. So, I already pointed out one advantage. Namely, that you can do the arithmetic faster, right? Let me show you another advantage. Have a look at um, have a look at what I've got in the right hand corner. Just put your pens down for a second. Um, I've just made up this equation, this system of equations. It's really easy, but I want to show you a common problem that solving simultaneous equations has, particularly when you first learn them. Okay, so for instance, what might you do to this? You might take this second equation, and you might think, well, I'm going to multiply by two. How about multiplying by 2? Is that okay? Right. So you get 2a minus uh, 4b equals 2. Is that okay? 
and I'm going to call this equation 3. Now at the moment this is all fine, like I, it's a very simple question, you haven't had your brain clouded from all these other questions you've been doing in the exam and you're not in a rush, so you can do this fine. What would you do with this? Minus number 1. You would have 3, sorry that 2 three just been messy, 3 and 1 and they would interact together, okay? Ah, however. When you don't get such a simple question, and when you are in a hurry, and you are making yeah, errors, you'll do something like, oh, wait, I'll put together equation 3 and equation 2. I'll do something like, oh, I don't know, 3 take away 2 lots of 2, right? Something like that, and you say, oh, okay, that'll be 0, 0, 0, 0, and I'm like, oh, what happens, you know? I'm a bit confused. What went wrong? Why did I just get... No, why, why am I so upset, okay? What was the methodolo methodological problem with what we did? No, seriously, what did I do wrong? Can you articulate it? Good, yes, exactly right. Um, if you didn't catch what they said, you're on fire today. Man. Um, even though equation 3 and equation 2 are different, they came from the same place, they're equivalent, right? So you can't put it back into yourself, otherwise you get, you know, nonsensical things like this, right, which don't give you any extra information. You never, never, ever, ever have this problem with matrices. Why not? Think about it. You'll never do this with a matrix. Because you replace There's only ever one of itself. Aha! Uh -huh. So, remember how we were saying, oh, it's a bit of a pain. You've got to write them out every time. Every time. You've got two equations, two equations, two equations, right? Because you're writing them out every time, they never disappear. You can never put a row back into itself. There's only ever one of it, right? So, whereas here, I've actually got two copies of equation two. They just look a little bit different, but they're the same equation. So, that's why you can mistakenly put it back into itself. You will never do that with a matrix. So advantage one, you can do arithmetic faster. Advantage two, you don't get confused like this. Advantage number three, when you make things bigger, they don't get harder. I want you all to try now and have a go at solving this system. Okay, write it out as a matrix and give it a go.